on the top line, it looks on our current data that if there had been a general election on the day that it was done, that Labour would get 470 seats and the Conservatives 129. But, and I cannot stress this enough, those are not the numbers to focus on. And I'm going to be explaining why as we go through this presentation. That Labour lead is significant, but it is smaller than the last time we did it. And remember, I've said that that lead has shrunk. And that's largely from our read of our data is that Sunak has managed to win back some of those Tory voters dis dis disaffected by the trust quarting disaster uh, budget. Um, but Labour's margins are falling everywhere. I'm going to come on to that in a bit more detail. They really are falling all over the country. And if you cast your minds back to 2017 and to 2019, Remember that UKIP stood down for Theresa May's Conservatives in a lot of marginal Conservative constituencies. And the Brexit party under Nigel Farage, who he claimed right up to the last minute that he was going to stand candidates everywhere, eventually didn't, of course, and uh, stood down candidates for Boris Johnson. So if Reform UK do that, and they stand aside in Conservative marginal seats, and we apply a very crude sort of worst case scenario 100 percent vote transfer from them. Labour's seat hall drops to 401 and the Conservatives go up to 201. But then there are these undecided voters. Remember on the slide before I told you that the third most popular option in our poll was don't know. You know, there's a, a, a decent chunk there still. And our analysis of that data is that actually Labour could more plausibly be looking at 370 seats and even that might be at the high end of a predicted seat hall with the Conservatives on 232. And neither of those scenarios has to happen independently of one another. They could both happen at the same time. And if they do, so if a lot of those undecided voters break back to the Conservatives and we see Reform UK standing down candidates, then we're back into hung parliament territory with Labour falling as low as 316 and the Conservatives on 286. So the new battlegrounds appear to be Scotland, the South East and the East of England, where you've got over half of Labour's most marginal seats um, and voter trends in Scotland are now being dominated by that fallen SNP vote share and a rise in people saying they don't know in Scotland. So I've said it before, here we go. Labour's margins are falling everywhere. Now, there are 206 marginal constituencies, according to our data, in GB at the moment. So that's out of the 632 seats in GB. What do we mean by marginal? We mean that 5% or less separates the first and second parties. 165 of those are in England. 154 of those are Labour Conservative marginals. Three of them are Lib Lab, one Lab Green, and seven Con Lib. There are 38 in Scotland, the vast majority are Labour SNP marginals, two SNP Conservative marginals, and there are three marginals in Wales, two Labour Plaid and one Labour Conservative. So of those 206 marginal seats across the country, it's Labour that we can say are 197 of them, they're within 5% uh, of those, and that's gone up from 133 the last time we did this polling uh, at the end of last year. And a disproportionate number of Labour's marginals are in the east, southeast, and Scotland. And you can see those circled in the table. And 155 of 197 Labour marginals are where they are in a, a runoff with um, the Conservatives. So if we look at a map, the, the map on the left is showing the projected winner. And the map on the right is showing who's in second place challenging uh, for that seat. So are within 5% of catching. Um, I should say that this is all going to be on our website from 10.30 when the embargo lifts and uh, when you hover your mouse over these, it actually gives you the constituency name and the data. Now, this is the most technical of the charts that I'll be showing you. Um, so this chart is comparing our October MRP and our May 2023 results using data from 392 constituencies that have an 80% similarity to a current constituency boundary according to the National Boundaries Commission. I didn't want to be comparing apples and pears, so that's why we've limited it to just these. So it's sort of apples and slightly different shaped apples being compared here. 
and you can see a box plot for each uh, region and nation. Um, and these are so the change in neighbours' margins in each region um, and nation. So um, at the top, in the northwest, West Midlands, Yorkshire and Humber, um, you have a greater median fall in labour's margin. The line inside the box is giving you the median for the region and the edges are the 25th and 75th percentile of the distribution for the region and the ends, the vertical lines at the end of the horizontal bars coming out of the box, um, are the minimum and maximums and the dots are just for real outlier seats that we didn't want to include in that distribution. So, short answer is Labour's margins are falling everywhere, um, but but particularly in line with this chart. So onto the undecided voters, that big block of people who are claiming that they don't know. Now, remember, don't know isn't an option on a ballot paper. You don't get to tick that box. And we did this wavering wall report at the end of last year and found that the majority of those undecided voters were likely to break to the Conservatives. And there's been some changes to the overall profile of undecided voters since then. So they're now younger as a whole. Um, and this is likely to be a result of older voters returning to the Conservatives in England, um, soon like winning those back, bringing the overall age of undecided voters down. The education profile of undecided voters continues to skew heavily uh, to poll respondents who are not university educated. And a very large chunk of them are women, 69% of undecided voters of women, that's gone up from 63% uh, the last time we did this. And there's been this marked increase in undecided voters in Scotland, um, which is obviously a result of those who previously intended to vote SNP now going towards undecided. Now, we, um, we focus on education profile of the don't know voters because um, education profile uh, closely matches the party affiliation of those don't know voters in the 2019 general election and of those who voted about two thirds voted conservative um, and 15 percent labor so what we're what we're seeing here on this chart is that um we think that of the conservative of the don't knows in england about 61.5 percent of them break conservative when pushed 25.4 percent break labor that labor numbers come up um quite a bit uh, from sort of the low uh, teens to 25.4%. And then when we redistribute those don't knows on that basis, that's when you see the Labour seat all come down to 370 and the Conservatives going up to 232. And when we allocate undecided voters, you know, according to that, that that's the, the picture you get. Um, wait. I'm like losing my place. I'll get I'll get back. I'll get back to my notes. Um, right. Okay. I think we can move on. I think I think that's pretty clear, but I can answer some more questions at the end. Um, Scotland is the other one that I uh, mentioned as being quite interesting now. So, Labour is looking strong in Scotland. There's no doubt about it. Um, we're projecting that they would pick up 31 seats if the election were held today. But when we look at uh, how vote shares have changed since October, it, it's always telling us that Labour's winning there by default. Um, so they're benefiting from a large transfer of votes from the SNP to don't know rather than over to them. So on the left, you've got uh, the seats where SNP has lost most vote share are the places where don't knows have popped up the most and where Labour has picked up the most. But the rise in don't knows is uniformly above the rise for Labour. So that grey line and the grey dots being above uh, the red line, which is the Labour line indicating that Labour really aren't seeing as much benefit as they could be from SNP voters bolting the party. The right-hand graph shows that Labour don't appear to be losing voters to don't know in Scotland, um, but they're just not picking up the SNP votes that are going into don't know. And that is almost it from me. So to recap, Labour's lead does look healthy, but their margins are falling everywhere. And we've still got 12 to 18 months to go before an election. They now have 197 marginal seats, of which 155 are Labour Conservative uh, fights. So this is this is a summary, if you like. That's scenario one. Very plausible because UKIP and Brexit Party have done it before. If Reform UK stands aside, that Labour seat hall coming down to 401. If they don't know, then we think about 65% of them could break towards the Conservatives and just... 25% back 
to Labour. If that happens, that brings Labour's seat hall down to 370. And if both of those things happen combined, which again is certainly not beyond the realms of possibility, you're into a hung parliament situation.